For every game, the play area and hut area must be defined. It is completely possible to disable the HUD from being seen, however, its box values still must be set up even if they are unused. In the hierarchy, click on the HUD and Boxes tab. For now, we are just going to set up the field of play and look at creating the HUD in a future video. You can see demo screen values. Changing the demo screen will allow you to see the HUD overlay over various created screens located at those coordinates. It is advisable to set all of these boxes to a value, considering they are easy to change later. For right now, I will place my HUD at the top of the screen at least two tiles wide and two tiles tall. Click and drag, and then press Set under the HUD area. For the playable area, select the rest of the play field and press Set under Playable Area. This sets up the bounds of the screen. These first two fields are allowed to overlap, though it's most common to separate them so the edge of the playable screen is represented by the edge of the HUD. Make a rectangle somewhere on the screen and set the text box area. We will refine this when we work on the actual HUD. You can set the monster spawn area for randomly placed monsters. We will also look into this in a later video. For the time being, mimic your playable area. Other area is for user-defined boxes. Right now, you don't have to do anything with it. Now that these defines are established, we can set up our first screen. In the hierarchy, go to the overworld map. There are a few helpful organizational tools on the map interface. You can right-click on a screen to completely zero out by selecting Delete Screen. You can add a comment to a screen by selecting Set Comment. These comments and labels do not compile with the game, they're simply used for the designer to make notes to him or herself. You can set the starting screen, though it is also possible to set the starting screen from on the screen itself, which is the more common method. You can also view the latest export, which will directly open the collision data for the selected screen in the default code editor. Click off of the right-click menu. Instead, Make sure that Bank 1 is selected from the top area, and double-click on any screen in the map. This creates a screen with access to Bank 1 graphic assets. If you had chosen Bank 2, you would have access to Bank 2 graphics. And if you had chosen Bank 3, you would have access to Bank 3 graphics. You'll likely notice that the palette is already loaded for you. This is because the palette we created was in the Palette 0 slot, which loads by default. You will also see that the tile in the zero position of your first main tile set is painted to the screen. Again, zero is the default value. You can set the main and screen tile set that the screen will use. The assets available will be the ones made of the tile sets that are loaded and thus available for this screen. You can also show or hide the HUD rectangle overlay. It often helps to be able to see the HUD rectangle to know where the edges of your play area are. Turning off the HUD in this interface does not affect the HUD being drawn on the screen. It is only for visual reference while creating screens. From here, it is very easy to place assets. First, click on an asset. When you move your mouse over the screen, you will see a ghosted image. By clicking, it places that asset. This places the graphic information, the tile collision data, and the attribute data. Sometimes, you have an asset that is difficult to place along the edges. If you need to move the mouse handle of that asset, holding the Shift key will grab the asset by its right edge. Holding the Control key will grab the asset by its bottom edge. You will then be able to place the asset along the edges. Pressing the 5 key will paint a tile with an empty asset, essentially erasing it. Hitting Escape will deselect an asset. And with no asset selected, you can use the Shift key to select an area on the screen by clicking and dragging. Once an area is selected, by pressing Ctrl-C, you can copy that area. And by pressing Ctrl-V, you can paste that selected area to the mouse's location. To manually change which sub-palette the tile uses on a screen, hover the mouse over that asset and use the Q, W, E, or R key to repaint that tile with the respective sub-palette value. 
To manually change the collision data a tile uses on a screen, right click on a tile and choose modify attribute. And you will have the ability to select the new collision data for that single tile. When you hover the mouse over a tile, you can see at the top all of the information for that tile. Its position, its tile number, the sub palette it uses, and its collision type. If you return to your world map and double click on the screen adjacent to the screen you just worked on, it opens the new screen. You'll be able to see along the shared edge a ghosted image of the original screen. This is to help you line up collision data between screens. You can easily navigate between created screens by clicking the arrow keys. If a new screen does not exist in the place where you navigate, a new one will be created using the current graphics bank. If for some reason you need to see more collision data of the adjacent screen, you can use the plus and minus keys to expand and contract the number of ghosted tiles that you're able to see. This should give you a basic understanding of painting assets to screens. We will look more in depth at screen info in a later video.